Before humans relocate, before life on Mars begins, humanity must first answer difficult questions about basic biology. In the next two to three million years or half a century, the dream of life on Mars may no longer seem incredible. This includes creating colonies, extracting underground resources, and giving birth to the first generation of two-legged Martians. However, right now, no one knows whether humans can reproduce in space, whether during space travel, or while living on another planet. To be clear, having sex in a low-gravity environment is a fundamental physics problem. It's not that we haven't tried to find answers to this problem. Salamanders, frogs, fish, and various plants have been used as experimental subjects to study the effects of space travel on reproduction. However, the results so far have been varied and inconclusive. Chris Renhart, an expert in space medicine at a medical college, stated that the primary question we should address isn't about the equipment, although great equipment would help. Ultimately, the chaos will be caused by humans if we ignore the human body's system in future planning and design. The evolutionary processes on Earth have been adapted to work in an environment characterized by fundamental forces like gravity. In space, gravity is absent, and on Mars, gravity is only about 38% of Earth's gravity. Until now, no one has figured out how a low-gravity environment will affect the reproduction of mammals. Similarly, space radiation is intense and highly destructive compared to Earth, where the planet's magnetic field acts as a shield against high-energy space particles. The high radiation levels are already a significant concern for space explorers, prompting space agencies to closely monitor the radiation exposure of astronauts in orbit. The effects of gravity and radiation on reproduction have become critical issues that scientists are trying to address. With the ethical considerations of studying medical risks in humans, scientists have spent decades sending various animals and related tissues into space. Early experiments by the Soviet Union in the late 1970s included sending several mice into orbit aboard the Cosmos 1129 satellite. Evidence showed that they could mate in space, but none of the females gave birth. This is not surprising to anyone familiar with the sensitivity of rodents to environmental changes. Later, NASA scientist April Longo sent pregnant mice into orbit to observe how space travel affected the later stages of pregnancy. Upon return, it was found that the birthing process was normal. However, other research indicated that mouse pups exposed to low gravity conditions had abnormal development of balance systems or inner ear mechanisms. Space travel also reduced the number of sperm in mice and increased abnormalities in mouse sperm. Longo reported that existing data showed that various aspects of pregnancy, birth, and early development in mammals could continue under altered gravity conditions. For mice, there were similar complexities. Research indicated that these two rodent species responded differently to changes in gravitational sources. Two cell mouse embryos sent with the Columbia shuttle did not develop further, even though they grew normally on Earth. Subsequent simulations of low gravity environments have shown that in vitro fertilization can occur normally 
but embryos still cannot implant and grow at a normal rate when transferred to female mice. Recently, a Japanese-led study discovered that freeze-dried mouse sperm stored for nine months in space could still produce viable embryos. Research also demonstrated that crickets and fruit flies could reproduce in space, and Japanese rice fish managed to mate and give birth while aboard the Columbia Space Shuttle. Meanwhile, salamander eggs fertilized on the Mir space station developed into embryos, although some changes were observed. Similar results were found with sea urchins, where fertilization was possible, despite low gravity affecting sperm movement, and quail eggs incubated on Mir failed to develop normally. Despite these and other experiments, we still cannot form a comprehensive picture of the effects of space travel on reproduction. When breaking down reproduction into its various stages, there is still no scientific plan that effectively studies the impact of the space environment on each step of the process. Knowing that reproduction is possible is one thing. Understanding how to ensure it can be done safely and effectively is another. Nearly all research indicates that things may not work out as hoped or might not work well enough. To progress, we need more extensive and better studies, including those involving humans. Addressing the concerns related to long-term human settlement on Mars, a team based at NASA's Langley Research Center has designed experiments to study the effects of low gravity on mammalian reproduction. The proposed experiment, MICE, HAB, plans to place a group of mice in lunar orbit within a rotating habitat that allows for near-automatic observation and management. Equipped with 600 cameras and remotely operated animal care equipment, the experiment will study three generations of mice per year to assess the impacts of space travel and low gravity, tracking birth rates and overall health. Once a year, scientists will collect necessary samples from the experiment. However, there is no indication that this experiment will commence soon. Even though scientists are concerned that such studies might not fully answer human-related questions due to the significant differences in human and other mammalian reproduction, ethical and practical considerations mean we must carefully choose our experimental goals. We might need to rely on assisted reproductive technologies to produce the first generation of Martian humans or conduct direct experiments, such as sending a couple into space to see if they can conceive. Alternatively, we could send frozen embryos to Mars and attempt to thaw and grow them there. Scientists have posed these questions despite the ethical complexities involved. For instance, researchers could send human reproductive cells to the International Space Station to test in vitro fertilization in space, comparing embryo development rates with a control group on Earth. Another approach could be sending fertilized embryos to the space station to observe the effects of the space environment on growth, DNA damage, and repair, possibly using non-viable embryos to navigate ethical challenges. Ultimately, the real test would be observing the impact of space travel on embryos that can continue to develop.
If you like space stories, you are our friend. Click follow and press the bell so you don't miss any action.